Rush Revere and the Brave Pilgrims, Chapter 1. Okay, so the first thing you see on your assignment is a picture of the Mayflower. And look what it says next to number one for the drawing. That's the poop deck. <laughs> it's not what you think, though. It's not what you think. So um, in the story, it'll explain what the poop deck is. And uh, we'll come back to it. Okay, chapter one. Now remember, I want you following along best you can. And if you want to turn your Chromebook, if your Chromebook can flip back like a tablet so that you can hold it like a book, um, you might want to do that. It makes the page bigger and it's easier to read. Sometimes that's nice. I'll give you a second. So if you want to get it flipped around. And if you want to get one of these little stylus, um, you can see like it has a little rubber tip. This is what I use when I'm working on a touch screen. And then I kind of feel like I'm working with a pen. It's a little bit easier. Uh huh. Yeah. So now it gives you the page a little bit bigger. It's a little easier to follow along and you're just tapping your answers. All right, it looks like we are ready to go. Here we go, chapter one. The school bell rang and a few more students rushed into the classroom followed by Principal Sherman. The principal of Manchester Middle School was not a small man. If the door frame were any smaller, the principal would have to duck his head and twist his way into the classroom. I stood outside in the hallway as the door closed but watched and heard what was happening through the door's small window. Attention everyone, please take your seats, said the principal with authority. He stood at the front of the classroom, hands on his side, while his eyes scanned the desks and chairs. I have an important announcement. The room was silent. It was apparent that Principal Sherman did not tolerate disrespect. I have some unfortunate news, he said. Your teacher, Ms. Borington, needed some extra time away from the academy to help care for a sick family member. In the meantime, I feel very fortunate to have found such a qualified replacement. First question, who is the principal, Mr. Sherman or Ms. Borington? Mr. Sherman. Mr. Sherman, good, okay. And on to the next page. You know that at Manchester Middle School, we have the smartest and most educated teachers. It is my pleasure to introduce you to your substitute, Mr. Revere. As if on cue, I opened the door to the classroom and walked in. As Principal Sherman prattled on about the importance of giving me their whole attention, I walked over to the chalkboard and grabbed a piece of chalk. In the upper left-hand corner, I wrote my name, R-U-S-H-R-E-V-E-R-E. -E -E. Principal Sherman then turned to me and said, Mr. Revere, the students of Manchester's Honors History class are now in your charge. I know, he said, turning to the class and then back to me. They will give you their utmost respect. While he walked past me on his way to the door, he lowered his head and whispered, if the boy in the back row with the red baseball cap gives you any trouble, please send him to my office. Without another word, he opened the door and disappeared. As I turned to the students, I noticed a hand in the air from a girl with blonde hair and two perfectly placed pink bows. Before I had a chance to even call on her, she asked, your first name is Rush? That's weird. And why are you dressed like that, she said. I could tell that this student was all business. If there were a pecking order in this class, she would probably be at the top of the food chain. I looked at my seating chart and replied, thank you, Elizabeth. Do you go by Liz? She rolled her eyes and grunted, no, unlike some people, I have a real name. It is Elizabeth. 
Well, it's a lovely name if you like four syllables, I said, winking. How many syllables in Elizabeth's name? Four. Elizabeth. Four it is. Good job. If you must know, my real name is Rusty. But when I was your age, my favorite class was history. In fact, I found myself rushing to history class every day I had it. I would rush from my home, rush down the street, rush through the school until I was sitting at my desk. Eventually, my teacher started calling me Rush, and it stuck. Two girls leaned over and whispered to each other. One pointed at my pants and giggled. Ah, yes, my clothing. Certainly my colonial shirt with a waistcoat and an outer coat over it, as well as knickers, stockings, and a three-cornered hat was enough to make me look like I was ready to go trick-or-treating. You're probably wondering about my clothing, I said. Can anyone guess who I'm dressed as? A couple of students raised their hands, and I pointed to each one. George Washington, said the first. Good guess, but no. However, I am dressed as someone who fought in the same Revolutionary War as George Washington, and they assuredly knew each other. Are you Thomas Jefferson, asked another student. No. However, another good guess. Mr. Jefferson lived during the same time, but I don't think he could ride on a horse fast enough as if he was flying from city to city. Then the boy with the red baseball cap raised his hand. He was smirking at me. The kind of look you give with the intent of hitting the bullseye on a dunking machine. Reluctantly, I pointed to him. Then you must be Peter Pan, he said. The students burst out laughing, and now I understood the warning from Principal Sherman. What is Rush Revere's real name? Rusty. Rusty, good. I glanced at the seating chart and then replied, Mr. Thomas White, is it? I go by Tommy, he said. And I think Tinkerbell just flew out the window, so you might want to go catch her. <laughs> Again, the class laughed. I smiled politely and waited until the room was quiet again. Tommy appeared to be gathering up his history book and backpack. Are you planning on going somewhere, Tommy? I asked. Aren't you sending me to the principal's office? He asked matter-of-factly. This time, I laughed. I could see that the entire class looked confused. Apparently, Mrs. Borington did not tolerate the silly antics from a class clown. Absolutely not. If I did, you would miss the most exciting history lesson of your life. Um, for the record, history is not exciting, Tommy said. Seriously, I have to stay? Well, I hope you choose to stay, I said. I love your imagination, Tommy. That's exactly the kind of mind I want all of you to have as we discover history together. Discover the stories of the exceptional people who made us who we are today. I dress like this to help your imaginations. For as long as I can remember, my boyhood idol was, has been the famous American patriot, Paul Revere. He was a silversmith. He took part in the Boston Tea Party he developed a system of lanterns to warn the Minutemen of, British, of a British invasion. And of course, the event that he's most famous for, his midnight ride in April of 1775. Tommy eased back into his chair. I could tell he wasn't convinced that history was exciting, but I could see a hint of curiosity on his face. Who was Mr. Revere's boyhood idol? Paul Revere, good, Paul Revere. Imagine that it's midnight, I said. It's very dark outside. You hear the hoot of an owl and perhaps see bats fly through the air under a full moon. You're on a secret mission to ride as fast as you can to warn the colonists that the British are coming. Raise your hand if you're up for the challenge. Several of the students raised both hands. 
mostly boys, including Tommy. However, I saw one girl in the back of the class who raised her hand too, but then quickly dropped it. Hmm, I had noticed this girl earlier. She didn't laugh when the rest of the class laughed. She looked very comfortable sitting in the very last row in the corner. Her dark hair had a blue feather clipped in it. She wore jeans with a hole in one knee, but I could tell it wasn't a fashion statement. I looked at the seating chart and noticed the girl's name, Freedom. What an unusual name. Personally, I couldn't help but be a fan. Ah, I see we have several brave souls who are ready to ride like Paul Revere. However, in order for you to ride, you're going to need a horse. I paused. Nothing happened. This time a little louder. I repeated every word slowly. <clears throat> I said, we're going to need a horse. I glanced at the door. I paused again. Still nothing happened. The students looked at me very confused. I sighed. We're supposed to have a special guest join us, but it appears he's running late. Excuse me while I go and see if he's lost. I walked toward the door, opened it, and glanced down the hallway. Nothing. I walked down the hall toward the front doors of the school and passed by the door to the teacher's bathroom. I paused, considering my options. I heard the toilet flush. And then I heard what sounded like the clomping of horses' hooves. Oh, I rolled my eyes and pushed the door open. Sure enough, there stood my horse, Liberty, admiring himself in the mirror. What is his horse's name? Liberty. Liberty, good. Liberty, I shouted. Startled, Liberty bumped into one of the bathroom stalls and knocked the door halfway off its hinges. You missed your cue and your entrance. I'm trying to teach a history lesson and you're an important part of that, I said. You really shouldn't sneak up on large mammals like that, Liberty replied. See the damage we can cause? Not my fault. I'm the victim here and I'm pretty sure you're a few minutes early. Besides, it's not like I wear a wristwatch or carry a smartphone, Liberty replied. Oh, oh my apologies. It would be my pleasure if you would care to join me, I said sarcastically as I held open the bathroom door for him. That's more like it, he said as he walked past me without looking in my direction. Liberty stuck his head out the door and looked both ways. When he didn't see anyone, we walked toward my classroom. Now, remember what we talked about. We don't want to freak out the students the first day by showing them a talking horse, I said. <clears throat> Yes, 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 yes. My lips are sealed, said Liberty, as he pantomimed, zipping his lips with his hoof. Good, now I'm going back in. Listen for your cue. I returned to the class and was glad to see that no one had left. <sighs> I apologize for the delay. As I was saying, it was a midnight ride from Charleston to Lexington when Paul Revere shouted, the British are coming, the British are coming. This would not be complete or even possible without a noble and swift horse. Please welcome our special guest, Liberty. Liberty pushed open the door and strutted into the classroom. <gasps> the students in the front row leaned back, utterly shocked at what they were seeing. Who was the special guest? His Good job, his horse, Liberty. No way, said Tommy. You actually brought a horse into school? <gasps> this is so cool. Most of the class was standing by now, watching Liberty prance around the front of the room. From the way Liberty was soaking up the attention, you'd think he was standing in the winner's circle of the Kentucky Derby. Several students still looked flabbergasted. They watched Liberty as if he were a mythical unicorn and crowded closer to him. The girl named Freedom, however, stood five steps back from the rest of the class. Was she afraid? No, not afraid. Unsure. Yes, that's it. She was looking at the other students, unsure of whether she was welcome to join them in their new discovery. 
Don't get too close to us, freedom, said Elizabeth, who stood at least two inches taller than the other girls in the class. The horse might smell you and run away. Freedom stepped back to her desk and sat down. Class, I assure you that Liberty is very friendly. There's no need to be alarmed. He doesn't bite, and fortunately, he's potty trained, I said, still irritated that Liberty was late. Ha! Liberty snorted at my last comment, clearly insulted, and flicked his tail into my face. His horse hair tickled my nose, and before I could stop it, I sneezed. Achoo! It happened so fast that Liberty instinctively said, Bless you! I froze, wondering if anyone had heard that. Liberty froze, clearly worried if I had heard that. The students froze, clearly trying to determine if they had heard that. Finally, one of the students broke the silence and slowly said, Did your horse just say, bless you? What did Liberty do when Rush Revere sneezed? He said, bless you. My horse? T -t -t Talk? I stammered, looking back and forth between the students and Liberty. Um, well, yes. I've taught him a couple of words, sort of like a talking parrot. Words like, bless you. I mean, what else do you say when someone else sneezes? I said, trying to laugh it off. Then, without warning, I sneezed again. Hachoo! This time, Liberty said, Gesundheit! Again, the students were wide-eyed and speechless. This was not going as planned. The horse, as they say, is out of the bag. So I decided to confess, sort of. I sighed again. The truth is, Liberty is an exceptional learner. He's very bright, and of course, he loves American history. So as long as you can keep this a secret, I can keep bringing Liberty to our class. Agreed, I said, hoping it was enough. You would have thought I had just asked if each student wanted a million dollars. A flurry of responses came rushing back at me. Yes, okay, I'll keep it a secret. I'll do it, I'm in. Well, then it appears we're unanimous, I replied. Wonderful. I turned to Liberty. Is there anything you'd like to say? Liberty let out a big horsey, nee! The students looked at each other and then back at me. Tommy was the first to speak and said, not very impressive for a talking horse. I turned to Liberty and mumbled, seriously, that's the best you can do? Then I turned back to the class and laughed. Liberty has quite the sense of humor, I said. Clearing my throat, <clears throat> I looked at Liberty and I spread my arm toward the class and said, Liberty, the jig is up. Your cover has been blown. Go ahead and tell the class whatever you'd like. Liberty smiled and I can only imagine what was about to come out of his mouth. What do you predict Liberty will do next? Um, Talk, dance, or sneeze? Get We're predicting what will come out of his mouth. Talk. Probably gonna talk. And there's a picture. He inhaled deeply, and then in one long breath, he repeated the preamble of the Constitution. <gasps> we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. <sighs> he said, gasping for air. Spontaneously, Liberty was showered with praises. Awesome, cool, sweet, unbelievable, no way, wicked, whoa, dude. Liberty took a bow or two. Show off, I said out of the side of my mouth. 
Liberty ignored me as the students came to the front of the class and surrounded him, touching and petting his mane and fur. Oh, you're too kind, he said. Tommy started scratching li behind Liberty's neck. Ah, yes, said Liberty, right there. Oh, little to the right. Yes, that's it, right behind my left ear. Ah, ah, ah. How did you say that in one breath, Tommy asked. I bet you could do it if you tried, said Liberty. I rolled my eyes and realized that my class was officially horsing around. All right, class, back to your seats, I said. Show and tell is over. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The students returned to their seats, and I decided we had spent enough time on the introduction and pleasantries. Class, I want you to put away your history books. Of course, books are wonderful, but when I'm teaching, you won't need them. Mr. Revere, Tommy said with his hand in the air, not to be rude, but I'd rather hear Liberty talk. What did Liberty say? The Bill of Rights, the Preamble of the Constitution, the Pledge of Allegiance. The Preamble of the Constitution, the Preamble. So that's the beginning of the Constitution. It's a little introduction to the Constitution. That's what he said, the we the people statement. I knew I would love this class, Liberty said, jumping in. You know, horses have been an important part of this country. Oh no, I thought, here he goes. Liberty continued breathlessly. You could say we're the backbone of America. We've lived among the Native Americans. We fought in the greatest battles. We've carried all the early presidents. One of my favorite riders was George Washington. Now he could ride. He also knew how to brush down a horse. The trick is using long strokes and starting at the top of... Thank you, Liberty, I butted in. You've been a wealth of knowledge, but I think we can save the horse brushing lesson for another day. This time, Tommy butted in. Wait, did he say he carried President George Washington? That was more than 200 years ago. <gasps> Liberty opened his mouth and then shut it. I think what Liberty was trying to say is, well, he's referring to my method of teaching, I said quickly, not ready to introduce the concept of a time-traveling horse. That's right, Liberty said, rescuing me. Having Rush Revere as a teacher is like going to the movies. You'll all like live action movies, right? No surprise that the students all said yes. I walked over and pulled down the white projector screen. History is a mystery until it is discovered. Your job is to use your imaginations as if you were actually there. I'm going to help you. The movie you are about to see will make it appear as if I've gone back in time. Liberty winked at me. Who was one of Liberty's favorite writers? George Washington. George, George Washington. Washington, yes. <laughs> Good job. Good job. I continued. Not everybody. Not yet. Your job is to try to identify where I'm at, who I'm talking to, what event is happening, and why it is so important. As I was speaking, Liberty walked over to the chalkboard, grabbed a piece of chalk with his teeth, and wrote, where, what, who, why. <laughs> Together, we're going to discover the truth about history. Are you ready? The students nodded. However, I could tell that Tommy was still not convinced he wanted to be here. As Liberty walked over to dim the lights, I walked over to the digital film projector and attached a small antenna to receive signals from my smartphone. Then I gave the class one final instruction. The movie will start in just a minute. I'm going to walk Liberty outside for a breath of fresh air. I'll return shortly. What about the popcorn? Tommy asked. An excellent idea, Tommy, I replied. Tomorrow you'll have fresh buttered popcorn. Ooh, a quick flurry of cheers came from the students. And I'll bring the red licorice, Liberty said. Not long ago, I was watching one of my favorite movies, Seabiscuit, 
It was the final race, and Seabiscuit was coming around the last bend, heading for the finish line, and I, of course, was on the edge of my seat. I couldn't take my eyes off the screen, so I blindly grabbed for a piece of licorice, but instead of eating it, I accidentally stuffed it up my nose. Oh, my horse, I thought, the comedian. I rolled my eyes as the class laughed. I pointed Liberty to the door at the back of the room and walked over to join him. When the movie is over, we'll review what you saw, I said. What are they going to discover together? The truth about horses, the truth about history, the truth about popcorn. The truth, the truth about <laughs> history, about, not popcorn. Yeah. That didn't compel popcorn. That would sound fun, though. Liberty and I slipped out into the hallway, and I jumped into Liberty's saddle. I pulled out my smartphone and tapped the camera app and switched it to video mode. As soon as Liberty jumped through the time portal, I would tap record and video our adventure, which would be transmitted to, transmitted to the film projector back in the classroom. It's a miracle that it works, but this way the students could see and hear exactly what Liberty and I were experiencing. Do you have your seasickness pills? Liberty asked. Already took one, I replied. Good, because the last time we were on the Mayflower, you looked like green jello, he said with a laugh. No time to spare, Liberty. Let's go. Liberty bounded down the hall and said, rush, rush, rushing to history. A vertical swirling hole of purple and gold began opening in the middle of the hallway. It grew in size as Liberty approached. I grabbed tighter to the horn on Liberty's saddle and shouted, 1620, Holland, the Pilgrims. All I could do now was hope we'd landed on dry land. Right before Liberty jumped through the time portal, I had the feeling we were being watched. I turned my head and the last thing I saw was someone's head dart back into the classroom. Someone with long dark hair and a flash of blue. So what did they jump through? Uh, time portal. They jumped through the time portal. And who do you think was, was who was watching out the door? Who do you think? The girl who was silent and she has vision. Yeah, she has the blue feather in her hair, right? Freedom. Freedom, freedom. All right, good job. Yes, and submit.